Hey there, welcome back to BABCS IGNU. We are your go-to channel for all the things in IGNU BA Psychology Honors. So whether you are marking on a brand new journey with IGNU, in need of some last minute exam prep, or just seeking some clarity on those topics, you are right in the place. And if you are joining us for the very first time, a huge warm welcome. Thank you for tuning in and please do us a favor by hitting that subscribe button. That way you won't lose us to the never-ending feed of YouTube. As you know, in this series, we are discussing BPCC 102, Biopsychology. And today we are talking about the fifth unit, Hemispheric Specialization. Alright, in this unit, we are going to understand the brain's two hemispheres and what exactly they are up to. We'll be exploring their respective functions and what happens in the case of split brain. You ready? Let's begin. Now, as you might have noticed, a lot of people around us are right-handed, meaning the majority of the world population leans towards being right-handed and they are often called dextrals. However, there's a unique group of individuals who favor their left hand. You might be having a friend or two in your circle, right? They are known as senestrals. And to add a sprinkle of curiosity, there's a tiny fraction of people who effortlessly use both their right and left hands simultaneously. Do you remember the Dean from the movie Three Idiots? Yeah, we call them ambidextrals. Have you ever wondered why people have such different handedness? Well, the answer lies in the wiring of our brain's hemispheres. So let's gain a deeper understanding together. Okay, so we often think we have got just one brain, right? But surprisingly, it's actually made up of two parts called the left and right cerebral hemispheres. So these brain buddies have a special connection with the rest of our body. The left side of the brain controls the right side of your body and the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. Okay. So imagine it like this. Your left brain sees the world from the right side and your right brain checks out the left side. Yes. They say information from something called corpus callosum, a set of axons that connects left and right hemispheres. Basically, that's a bridge that helps them talk to each other. Now, even though these hemispheres, they look alike, they have their own talents. The left side is awesome at so many things, while the right side rocks in the cognitive functions. This difference in what they are good at is called hemispheric specialization or lateralization of function okay but back in the day people thought the left side was the superhero okay and the right side was the kind of sidekick if you call it okay they even called the left side the dominant one and the right side the minor hemisphere times have changed and now we know they are both important players in the brain okay so what changed now let's look at the development of theory of cerebral dominance. Picture this. It's the 1860 and we have Paul Broca, a French physician, anatomist and all-around brain enthusiast. So Broca noticed something interesting in his aphasia patient, you know, those having trouble with language. Every single one of them had a glitch in the left side of the brain, particularly in an area that now goes by the name Broca's area. Do you remember we had discussed this in our third unit? Yeah. Connecting the dots, Broca suggested that this left hemisphere is connected to the language ability. Also, now fast forward to early 1900s, we have got Hugo Carl Leipman. He noticed a pattern too, this time in patients dealing with apraxia, difficulty with voluntary motor activities. Surprisingly, they had damage on the left hemisphere as well. These uh, significant findings pointed to the left hemisphere being the VIP in charge of language and voluntary motor activities. So they basically said, hey, you know, it looks like the left side of the brain is calling the sorts when it's coming to language and moving our muscles voluntarily. So that's what led to the birth of the cerebral dominance theory. Okay. So now let's uh, look into the differences between left and right hemispheres. 
So this lateralization of function is statistical rather than absolute. It means that there is a relative functional difference between left and right hemispheres and one hemisphere possesses comparatively more specialization. Lateralization of function is presented briefly in seven major domain, namely a vision, audition, touch, moment, memory, language, and spatial ability. So the functions are given in the table below. Please pause the video right here and go through it. You can as well take this screenshot and this table is also in your study material. Okay. So now let's move on. Let's make the understanding of cerebral lateralization easy. Okay. We're talking about how our brains left and right side have their own specialities. Here are some examples. One, language dominance. So back in 1864, Paul Broca connected the dots and found that when it comes to talking and understanding language, the left side of our brain takes the lead. So it's like the language boss. Okay. Number two is ipsilateral movement. Now, usually our hemispheres control the opposite side of our body. But guess what? In 1996, Harland and Harrington discovered that when we do complex moves with one hand, both hemispheres get into action. Interestingly, the left side of the brain is more into ipsilateral moment game. So if there's a hiccup in the left brain, it might affect the left hand moves more. Okay. So on the number third, we have spatial ability. So Levi found out that when it comes to figuring out space related stuff like directions and distances, the right side of our brain is a superstar. You can say if there's a bump in the right brain, it can mess up how we see and understand space, you know, distance, objects, geometry. Okay. And number fourth, we have emotional ability. So the right side of our brain is like the emotional decoder. Studies show it's better at picking up on feelings and expressions. So people with left brain glitch might actually be superstar spotting lies because their right brain gets to shine in this game. Okay. On the fifth, we have musical ability. So Kimura in 1964 found out that right side of our brain is the musical maestro. If there's an issue on the right side, it might mess with our musical talents. And number six, we have differences in memory. Both sides have memory powers, but they specialize in different things. Left brain is the verbal memory champ, handling words like a pro. Okay. Meanwhile, the right brain takes the lead in non-verbal memory, like uh, pictures or shapes. Okay. So our brain got these divisions of functions between left and right sides. Each side has its own power. All right, now let's move into cutting the corpus callosum, the split brain. So before the 1950s, this corpus callosum thing was a big puzzle for brain scientists. Imagine this. Our corpus callosum is made up of 200 million axons located in the middle of our brain hemispheres. So scientists always thought like, hey, this thing is huge and it's right in the middle. It's got to be something important, right? But studies on monkeys, rats, cats, and even people with the damaged corpus callosum didn't give us many clues. Now, fast forward to 1953, there's Myers and Sperry with their groundbreaking experiments on cats. So before this experiment, Scientists were a bit stumped about what it actually does. So Myers and Sperry showed that this breeze is a key player in the brain's communication game between the left and right hemispheres. So they cut the corpus callosum in cats and discovered some mind-blowing things. So here's the thing. If you cut the corpus callosum, the left and right brain sides cannot communicate as easily. It's like disconnecting the hotline between them. So what happens if they can't communicate? Well, each side starts doing its own thing without knowing what the other is up to. So this experiment opened the door to understanding how the corpus callosum keeps our brain halves in synchronization. Without it, it's like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Literally. So, cutting it for epilepsy surgery helps control seizures, 
but it also means the left and right brain have to work without their usual communication. So the detailed experiment is in the book. Go through it. I'm sure you will be able to understand easily now. Okay, so I'm going to end the video here today. Let's recap real quick. Today we covered the topic, the left and right hemispheres, the theory of cerebral dominance, difference between left and right hemispheres and cutting the corpus callosum, along with the experiment done by Myers and Sperry's. Okay, so we'll understand the split brain in humans as well on our next video. Along with that, we'll see the methods to study brain lateralization. But before ending the video, I want to extend a huge shout out to each and every one of you for watching. Your support means so much for to us. If you have got any questions or want to share your thoughts, don't hold back. Drop your comment in the section below and send us a DM on our any social media channels. We are all ears. And of course, please hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and smash the subscribe button if you haven't done it already. If you want quick notes and updates, follow us on Instagram and join our lively discussion on Telegram. You'll find all the necessary links down in the description. Now, remember to stay curious, stay engaged and always keep in mind that you've got this. See you later.